Now let's just think about geotagging images or photos for the benefit of your Google My Business and making sure that people benefit from it. What actually is it then? What is geotagging? Well, geotagging is basically letting an image or a photo know where it was taken from. Why is it important? Well, it's important because Google is trying to build up you as an authority in your particular area. So Google My Business is all about local business, local inquiries. We often talk about local SEO, local search engine optimization. But to help Google understand what is local, then when it gets images and photos to your entry on Google My Business, if it sees that they were taken on a camera from the GPS coordinates, which is what geotagging is, if they sees it was local to your company, it builds your authority in Google for that particular area. Then if you've got people writing reviews about your company, and again, they're local, and they're saying, and they upload photos about your particular product, say you're a restaurant, and they've taken photos at home about your particular meal that they got as a takeaway, if it's geotagged on their camera and tells Google that they were local to where your shop is or where your entry point is or your service is, that builds your authority, locally speaking, within Google. So that when someone searches, where's the local takeaway? Those that have geotagged will have a slight advantage over those that haven't. So that's what geotagging is and why it's important to your business. So in today's video, I'm going to cover these things. I'm going to cover how you can geotag. And I'm going to show you six different tools that will help you to geotag. Some are free and some will perhaps be a case of downloading or even paying for if you want more than five or six particular entries per day. I'm also going to show you where you can add your photos on Google My Business and how to go about that. So I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you how you can help use these geotagged photos on your reviews and particularly how you can encourage others when they write a review to make sure. So I'm going to show you where that is that they can add the photos when they give you a review. I'll show you how you can already check to see if your photo is already geolocated, that already has longitude and latitude built in and where that is on the photo. And finally, I'm going to answer the common question, should you always put the same geolocation on your photo or should you change it to the area, maybe some random parts around the area of your central office or your service? So let's jump straight in and see how we answer those questions. So before you really get started on any geolocation, you just need to first of all know what your longitude and latitude is. And it's just literally two numbers you're going to need. And it's well worth just having these jotted down. And there's a really easy way to get these. So let's just imagine that your business is based in London. And let's just imagine you can you basically drill down in Google Maps down to the area where your business is. So um, let's just say our business in, is in Bermondsey and then locate, say it's on St. James's Road. This is purely fictional. But when you know exactly where it is, you think, well, that's my, my shop there, say, you just right click and then all you need to do is what's here. And when you do what's here, you notice then if this was my shop, my business, you notice these two numbers here. So the 51.49 and the minus 0, 0.0. And you just need to copy those two numbers. And that tells everyone in the world exactly the very place on the map, that very place there as to where you are. And of course, you can do that for any point. Uh, you just click on what's here and it'll give you those references. Now, jot those references down because you're going to possibly need those. You don't always need them, but when you're geotagging, you do need to know exactly what they are. And as we said, mention a bit later, we're going to look at the importance of, is it a case of always having the very same location for your business or should your images sometimes show maybe surrounding areas? So in this case, would it be better if there was, say you're a pizza shop, people might be taking pictures of pizzas in the homes around here. So would it be better if you geotag the pictures from them as well over there? Well, we'll look at that a bit later. So we've established what those numbers are then, what's here and those numbers there. You've got those for your business. So the next thing is then to look at some of the ways in which you can use those geotags 
and how you can add them to your images. So just to say, if you just take a standard image file and you then right click it and you go to its properties, and you'll know that on properties, you can look at details and you can then see all these various tags. Now you notice here, the longitude and latitude is actually down there as a GPS. And that's what you're actually going to be changing on the file. And you might think, well, is it just a case then of grabbing an image that doesn't have the GPS coordination and now putting those numbers I've just gained from Google Maps? And if it was that simple, then of course everyone will be able to do it. And that's where the issue is. And that's why you need software. You can't actually make those changes. They're kind of locked in. So when you take it on a GPS camera, they lock that in. And then once you've taken photographs or if you've produced artwork maybe locally, and you haven't got that GPS in there, which most images won't have if you've created them or taken a photo without the GPS setting, then it seems it's impossible to add that. And that's why we talk about geotagging photos because the majority of photos that go onto the internet don't have the longitude and latitude built in. And that's what we're trying to do. So that's why you're geotagging images. So here's the first one, geotag online. And this geotagonline.com just gives you again the opportunity to upload photos. You can drop them in here and then you can then look at the longitude and latitude if it's already built in the photo. If not, you can add it, write the data and then re-download the photo. And that's how you can do that. And this is a really easy one to use. So it's just a case of then once you've uploaded the photo, you can then pinpoint it. So you notice here, you can find the longitude and latitude by literally just moving the map around. So in this case, you wouldn't need to use those figures from Google Maps because you could just do this yourself. You just go literally in here and use the map. This gives you your longitude and latitude. So there's another way to find it. Once you've got the right area, then you write the data and that then produces that information onto that tag and then you download it as a separate image. And that picture that's downloaded then can be uploaded to your Google My Business and to some other areas which I'm gonna show you in a moment. So that's Geotag. The reason why this one isn't perfect is because you'll notice that you only have three photos a day. So I've used one already, three photos a day. If you did want more than that, you can have up to 500 a month, but it will cost you $5 a month. So that's something to consider not something that's uh, I think three a day actually works quite well for if you've just got one business that's more than fine so that's a geotag online really useful piece of software the second one is one that I've used many times now it's geoimagear or tool.geoimagear.com and this one again works very similar where you can drag and drop so you can upload an image it'll tell you whether or not it's got geotags this one has geotags already um, but if you wanted to change the geotags or if you wanted to write one on a place, then you can just do again exactly the same. And as you move this around, you'll notice the longitude and latitude moves with it. And again, it gets ready to rewrite the new ones. You click write exif tags. They're called exif tags, these geotags that we're talking about. And once you've written it, then you can download it. And this one comes with five a day. So you've got five here, you've got three there, so that's eight. They used to be free, but they've just then gone down the avenue of, of charging for it. If you wanted more than five a day, you can click on Buy Pro, and you'll notice that if you're just one user, then it's just under $10 a month. And that will give you 1,000 photos a month, so even more so. Um, and it also gives you PNG support as well as JPEG support. So you just need to notice if you've got a GIF, then you do need to convert it into a JPEG. Generally, these work best with JPEGs, uh, but some will use PNG as well. So that's the second one. The third one is called uh, the exifer.net. And I've tried this a couple of times and it hasn't really worked very well. Now it claims to be free, but actually uh, it's in beta. It did seem to have issues when I tried it. Um, I've kind of um, uploaded it try to to get this to work but again it, it kind of just doesn't seem to work for me so this one I wouldn't recommend only from the point of view of when I've tried it a few times I haven't got seamless solutions it kind of half works sometimes so that's the third one the fourth one disappointingly this had I had high hopes for this urban bird or it's editor.urbanbird.io all these will be in the comments below or in the description below all these links so you can try each one and uh, again I try this with guest access and apparently it's meant to be brilliant but I couldn't get it to work so whether I need to create an account with this but uh, in the end 
I kind of gave up on that one quite quickly. The next one is GeoSetter, and this is my favorite. So this is my top one. Uh, GeoSetter really works well, and it's a standalone. So rather than going online, you just need to download it. It works for Windows 10. So if you're a Mac user, then there isn't an equivalent of this that I can find. But this does actually work really well with Windows 10, and uh, there's a relatively new version as well. Oh, so I remember finding it really hard to find it. Actually, it's download here. And then you can got an execute or a zip. Again, I can't claim that uh, every time you download it, it'll be fine, but uh, it seems to be fine on my system. So once you've downloaded it, this is how it works then. So you just browse to your folder. You can then click on any of your photos and you'll notice if they've got geotags on, then you get these blue uh, dots. So this one's geotagged, for example. You can see where it's geotagged. So it shows you there that it's geotagged in the area where I am. If I click on this one, you'll see it's also geotagged. If I come out, you'll see that one's in London. Now the easiest way I found to add it, so like if we take this one here, and I know for example that this one is geotagged in my area. So what I can do is I can do right click, copy data, click on this one, right click, paste data. And then I want just the coordinates pasted, click OK. And you notice now that that's gone purple, which means that the data has now been put across to it. Uh, it's now got a blue tag as well. So that means that that's there. And then I found that the easiest way then was just to then go save changes of selected images or save changes and save changes. And that's it. That's how I've managed to get this. So if I now click on this and click on map, there you go, it's there. So that's quite incredible, isn't it? So even though if you've got just like one image that's got the right geotag on, so you could even do that from here, you get one image here, and then you bring it into this software, you'll find that immediately you can clone all those with the same location. So that might be really useful if you've got many that you want to do and upload. So this is probably my favorite tool and one that I'd recommend. There is one other tool that uh, you may have come across, Digicam. So here's Digicam. Uh, I just found this wasn't so easy to work with. It's probably far too much information on these. Um, if I click on this one as well, you'll see that uh, it picks up certain things. Um, the fact that these have got globes mean that it's got a geolocation on already. So remember, we've just done this one. That shows it's got geolocation. Uh, one of the ways I found to edit these, if you wanted to, is to go to Image Editor, then click on Tools, and then go to Edit Geolocation. And then that brings up this particular image, and then you can go from there. So it shows where it is. And what you can do is you can select other images. So you grab a few more images, put them in here, and you can drag them onto here. So you literally drag those images onto there, and you can then geolocate them all, or you can move this around as well. So if you wanted to, you could put this to this area instead. And then it changes the geolocations there as well. And then click apply and then save it. So that was another way to do it. Um, this one's probably a little bit more for photographers that really want to kind of get it up and running and really then kind of have all the detail on hand. Personally, my number one favorite would be GeoSetter. So that's my recommendation there. So the next question is where do you add your images that have now got these geotags? And of course you can add them really wherever your business exists. So if you're on uh, Yale, if you use uh, Yelp, if you use um, Facebook, Twitter, any social medias and blogs. In fact, wherever you use images really that relate to your video, then having these geotagged images is only going to emphasize to the search engines that you exist and that you can be authenticated in that particular area. So in this case, I've got uh, some images I've just um, uploaded to uh, geotagged and now I'll just dra drag one or two in. So it's just literally just drag them in. And then of course you can always write uh, just a little description and then just click save. Sometimes you may receive like a, um, in your email, just mentions here about, uh, are you still active? So it's important to click on these things as well. When you click on this, it just gives a signal to other indexes that you're still around. Now, I can't emphasize enough, but Google is interested in Yale. Google's interested in Bing. You might think that they're different, but they're not. 
And as you build up a higher confidence in your business status on all the others, you're also going to build that up in Google My Business. So the two are very much related. And again, you just need to click on here, make sure you've uploaded some images to there. So images really that are geotagged in all the areas where your images is relating to your business, like Facebook, Twitter, Yelp, and so on, is really an important part of what we're talking about. Now here's just one more thing to consider that's really going to help and this probably is one of the most important ones regarding geolocation and your images and that's let's say for instance here I've got I've just done a search for barbers and uh, let's just say this is my um, shop which it isn't um, then of course if I wanted if I had a good haircut uh, I can then write a review so if I click on write a review and what you want to do is ask, when you ask for reviews, and ask them to, to click on write a review, and obviously you're hoping they'll give you a five star experience and so on. But this is important too. Ask them to take a photograph of their haircut, for example, in this case, and then to upload it if they're happy to do it. So when they click upload, again, if they've taken it on their camera, then it will have a GPS setting on it. And hopefully then when they upload that image, then that customer image, that photo, is another recognition to Google that you exist. And of course, if it's local, then it would make sense with the business you're doing. And that really leads to one final question then. So that's uh, another way to upload photos. But one final question, and this one's often asked, and most people don't have the answer to it, but I'm going to give the answer. Should you always put the same geolocation? So we alluded to that earlier. So let's just take... Uh, a few examples then. So if you're a restaurant or if you're an art gallery or museum or say a pizza takeaway we mentioned earlier or a locksmith or a plumber, would you and should you always use the same geolocation on your images? And here's my answer. The answer is, is that Google wants things to be natural depending on the business. So let's just think about that. If you're a restaurant, then people take photos of your images. They're going to be in your restaurant. So therefore, you'd expect the geolocation to be the same. So if you took some pictures of some dishes, you put them up on Google My Business, you'd expect the geolocation to be the same because it's on the same address. But what about an art gallery or museum? Well, again, that would be the same because, again, the, the art itself or the, the, the items in the museum would be in the same area, the same geolocation. What about a pizza takeaway? Well, a pizza takeaway is different because it could be that if you were a pizza uh, parlor here and people were ordering pizzas around here, then, of course, if they took a photo of the pizza that they're eating at home, it would have a different geolocation. So it'd be in the same area, maybe a three mile radius, but it wouldn't necessarily mean it was the same geolocation. What about a locksmith? Again, that'd be more in a radius because you're serving an area. What about a plumber? Again, different jobs in different areas. So in the case of the barber here then, most of the haircuts would probably be within his shop, uh, the photos of them, but clients maybe, if they were doing uh, a review, they would then have a geolocation that would be different. So I think you can just think of it in a natural way. And then that really is what Google's looking for. And it does give different credits to different businesses. So don't just think that everyone's got to go and do the same thing, but think of it in real life and that will hopefully answer your question. Now there's about 20 other tricks and tips for Google My Business that most people aren't using. So join me now on the next video and I'll show you how to do those things to get more traffic and more clients picking up the phone for your local small business.